As we are coming to the end of the year, uh, we know that just in the next few days we shall be in December, December, <laughs> and uh, uh, and so that way we we are closing the year, okay? And there is something special about these months. Uh, there is something special about January, and there is something special about December. Uh, January is always our time of prayer. It's a time we pray and fast and seek the Lord concerning the rest of the year. That is what happens in January. And in December, that is the time we come together to, to thank God. All right? So we, we close the year with thanksgiving and we open the year with prayer and, 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 and fasting, seeking the face of the Lord. And so I just want us to, I want to set us, you know, ready for this new month and for this season of thanksgiving. We want to see something on being thankful, on being thankful. Uh-huh. You know, thanksgiving is, is, is something that almost all of us know. You don't have to be introduced to this. Uh, you know, we, we were told when we were young that it's good to give thanks. And uh, let's look at, you know, what thanksgiving is really. Uh, the first thing I would want to say is that thankfulness is an attitude issue. Thankfulness is an attitude issue. Uh, you, know, you, you, you know, if you are to be asked where is thankfulness or where does thankfulness reside, uh, thankfulness is an attitude issue. You know, it's a state of being within your heart. It's a state of being within your attitude. And so when we say you are thankful, you know, it means that your attitude is that of thankfulness. You are full of thanksgiving in your heart, in your attitude, in your mind. You know, it's a state of being that appreciates, uh, you know, the things that are happening around him or around your life. So it's a state of being. It's an attitude within your heart. And so when we say that, uh, you know, someone is thankful, actually what we are referring to is that that person, you know, has an attitude of thanksgiving. This person is appreciative of the things that are happening around his or her life. And let me also begin by saying that, um, uh, Attitude is what actually determines how we look at things. Some people have said that our attitude is our glasses. You know, if you wear green glasses, then you look at the world as green. Everything turns to become green. So um, if your attitude is that of thanksgiving, then when you look at everything around you, then you look at it from the perspective of thanksgiving. Okay, so attitude is everything. And I got an illustration here, uh, which, uh, you know, it excited me. Uh, we all of us have heard about the, the, the full glass and the half empty glass. You see that? Uh, that is what we have uh, up there. Uh, the first person here is that, you know, when this person looks at the glass that has water halfway, uh, this person says, uh, uh, this is an optimist. An optimist would say that the glass is half full. That is an optimist. You know, when he or she looks at the glass that has water halfway, you know, that person will say that the glass is half full. But the pessimist would say this, uh, the glass is half empty. You know, this person looks and says, you know, I still need something. You know, you didn't give me enough. In fact, this person is not appreciative that you already have something. So among the two, the pessimist and the optimist, you know, one of them has an, a grateful, has an attitude of thanksgiving, and the other one has an attitude of complaining. Okay. I don't know how do you look at life. I don't know how do you look at situations. You know? Uh, you, know uh, you know, it's very hard and it's not easy 
to stay around people who look at the world negatively. All right? Let's note, you know the Bible says we are the messengers of good news. That should be our attitude. We should be carriers of good news. We should be able to, to be carrying the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let, let's not be people who tell people it cannot be done. A pessimist will always see the impossibilities in things. Those have an attitude whereby any time they have, you know, people come up together and say, oh, I want to do this. A pessimist will come and tell you how many times this thing cannot be done. But let me tell you the truth. This world is ruled by the optimist. Can we say amen? amen? Please don't tell me how many times it cannot be done. Because already it's not done. So what difference does, does that make? You should tell me how it can be done. Because that is the only way we can now make the difference. If I am poor, I am poor. So don't tell me how much poor am I and how much I cannot rise. I'm already down. What's your problem, man? Hallelujah. The America is coming alive. Hmm? <laughs> you know? So all these things, life is ran by your attitude. You can look at the glass, you can look at life and say how empty it is. But you can look at life and say, wow, look at the opportunities around us. Do you know that every need is an opportunity of business? Actually, we do business based on the needs of people. So an optimist will look at the, at, at the, at the deficiencies and then comes up with a positive mind and then he says, yes, let me do something about this. So friends, so there are those attitudes that determine how we look at life. But of the great interest is this one, the attitude of an engineer. You know, when an engineer looks at the glass, what does the engineer say? The glass is twice as big as it needs to be. So an engineer would want to destroy the glass and create the size that fits the water. And we have engineers right here. Okay? Instead of making the opportunity, they would want to say, no, let's just fit it. Let's some, do something that fits. Let's not waste the resources. Let's just make a glass that fits the water that we want. That is the mind of an engineer. And this actually speaks on our attitudes, you know, on how we look at things in life. So thankfulness, as I've said, is an attitude issue. It is an attitude issue, brethren. Let me tell you the truth. You know, before you give thanks, before you do the acts of thanksgiving, it must flow from within you. Are you a thankful person? Are you thankful for the things the Lord has done for you? Are you thankful for the circumstances and the things you are going through in this life? A thankful heart is an attitude. And so we shall be able to look at uh, some of these exam uh, uh, examples from the scriptures. There are some facts about thankfulness. There are some facts about thankfulness. And uh, the first thing, fact about uh, thankfulness is this. That thankfulness is a product of choice. Thankfulness is a product of choice. You choose to give thanks. Are we together? You have to choose to be thankful. You have to choose to be either thankful or complaining and doing nothing and telling people how it cannot be done. You remember the story of the talents. You remember the story of the talents? And uh, uh, there was this guy who was given one talent. 
You know that guy? And I really like him. He was a man who reasoned. Okay? <laughs> you know, the, he reasoned so well. And look at his reasoning. What does he say? You know, when the master comes back and asks him now, please, I want everybody to bring back what you've done with the talent that I gave you. And this uh, gentleman comes to the Lord and then he says, I knew you. You see how he was, he was deep in thought. He really sized this guy so well. <laughs> you know, hmm? Utajua uju? Utajua uju? He looked at him and said, I knew you. I knew you were just a man who is wicked. And you want to harvest where you did not sow. But look sincerely, is that statement correct? Where did he get the one talent? Was it his own or it was given? So why is he accusing this man that he wants to reap where he did not sow? That is an attitude problem. This man was not thankful. Actually, when the talent was given to him, in his mind he said, this is nothing. And so he comes to the master and tells him, you just want to reap where you did not sow. But what is the fact? Actually, the very talent was not his. It was given to him. So, uh, you know, your attitude will even remove the opportunities that you have. Are we together? And so this man had to choose whether to be thankful or to be a complaining person. Now, let me also tell you another fact. It's not in this, but I found out that this to be a true fact. All winners don't have excuses to why things should not be done. People who succeed don't go for the excuses. People who succeed will always go for the opportunities that are there in things. But for people who always fail, they always have a reason to complain. Look at anybody who is a mamara, and I will show you a failure. Is it a failure or a failed person? <laughs> Of course, it's even a failure. Hmm? The real thing, the real failure. So, thankfulness is a choice. We have to choose to either be thankful or not to be thankful. We have a scripture in Luke chapter 17, verses 17 to 18, uh, but my emphasis is on verse 17. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Were, where are the other nine? This is the story of the ten lepers who came to Jesus and trusted him for healing. And the Bible says only one out of ten went back to say thank you. Only one out of ten went back to say thank you. That shows how ungrateful our human heart can be at times. And you know, we easily can condemn this guy and say, look at these people. Look at these people, how Jesus healed them, and they were not able to even remember to go and say thank you. But don't you know that we have done the same way like the nine many times? In so many ways, we have never been thankful for the things which the Lord has done to us. So thankfulness is a choice. You know, in so many ways, so many ways, people have done well to us. Our parents have blessed us. They sacrificed for us to study, to, you know, uh, to be in school. But you know right now what we tell them? You know, when you see their, uh, what is it, their, their phone, their, their, their call coming, you know, you just say, tell them, Mama, Niko Kazini, Niko Bisi, Takupige Gioni. But when your friend calls, you say, hi, how are you, friend? I'm busy, but can, can you tell me something a little bit? Many a times, really, we are not thankful. Surely. We are not thankful for what people, for what things people have done to us. And so... Thankfulness or unthankfulness is a choice. So these people were healed, but one came back to say, 
Thank you. So it's a choice. I want you to make a decision today that I want to be a thankful person. The second fact about thankfulness is that uh, a thankful heart is a contented heart. It's a heart that is contented. It's full of contentment. Uh, you cannot be saying thank you while you are uncontented. And you cannot be contented and fail to say thank you. Are you seeing that? These are the, the two faces, the two sides of the same coin. When you are contented, then you say thank you. But if you are never thankful, there is no way you're going to be contented. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 20 specifically, uh, Paul says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. That is the attitude you should be having. Giving thanks always, not sometimes, but always. And then for how many, how many things? All things. So giving thanks always and for all things to God the Father. That is, that should be our heart attitude in life. And you see here, you know, Paul had begun by saying, speaking to one another in Psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs and in uh, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, all that shows a heart that is contented. That all that speaks of a heart that is thankful. You know, you cannot be singing and making melody if you do not have contentment in your heart. Are we together? How will you make melody? How will you be singing when you are not thankful in your heart? Surely a thankful heart is a, is a heart that makes melody to the Lord. You know, unless you are singing this song by this guy who died, who, uh, who died in South Africa, who said, born to suffer. Now, unless you're singing that, you know, if you are in suffering and you are just not thankful, you know, if that's your attitude, you know, some of those guys, you know, actually that's also a song that comes over and out of an attitude. You know, this person looks at life that we are only born to suffer. Even if you bless him with a, with a million shillings, he will say, now suffering has come. Even if he's healthy, he will now say, now, <laughs> because his attitude is born to suffer. You see? So, but what the Bible tells us here that a thankful heart will always make spiritual songs, will bless the name of the Lord. A song that is, a heart that is thankful will arise in the morning and say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, and forget not all his benefits. This is a person that looks at the benefits of God. The third fact about thankfulness is that a thankful heart is an hopeful heart. It's a heart that is full of hope. You know, you cannot be thankful if you do not have hope. And uh, very interestingly, I found that in the book of Job. All of us know the story of Job. And the Bible says, when calamity struck Job and his household, the Bible says, and Job fell down before the Lord and he blessed the name of the Lord. You remember that story? You know, when people came and said, your wealth is being destroyed. When people came and said, your children have died. When people came and told Job all this, the Bible says, and Job went down before the Lord and worshipped the Lord. And that one is not easy. You don't bless the name of God when things are not so good unless you have hope in your heart. And this is what Job himself says about his attitude. This is where we get his attitude. He says, and after my skin has been destroyed, this is Job saying, yet in my flesh I will see God. You know, this was at the time now when his body, when uh, boils were over and sores were on his body. And he was just, you know, in his worst state uh, physically. And in that state of suffering, 
And in that acute point of his suffering, Job arises and says, after my skin has been destroyed. You know, it would have been good to say, after my skin has been restored. But Job says, after my skin has done what? Has been destroyed. So he knows that yes, these things will still get much more worse. But he still says, I have hope. Even if my skin is destroyed, he says, I still have hope. And he says, yet in my flesh, I will see God. Verses 27 puts an emphasis and he says, I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another, how my heart yearns within, within me. Look at this. This is a man who is full of hope. And because of that hope, when his skin is getting destroyed, he still has hope that there is something that the Lord can still do in my worst situations. Are we together? Look at Jesus when he comes to Lazarus. That is in John 11. The Bible says, and Jesus comes and asks Martha and Mary, where did you lay him? And the lady said to Jesus, Lord, he's been there in the grave for days now, and he's even stinking. But Jesus says, take me to where you laid your friend Lazarus, my, my friend Lazarus. And look at Jesus when he comes to, to the tomb. The first thing which Jesus does is this. He says, I thank you, O God the Father. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving can turn your worst situation into triumph. It is Thanksgiving that brought Lazarus out of the grave. There is hope to them who have a thankful heart. And actually, definitely, I can tell you again, there is no way people who do not have hope can have a thankful heart. The second thing I want us to look at is why should we be thankful? Why should we be thankful? The first thing on why we should be thankful is this. Because we are, we are entitled to nothing. Can we say amen to that? We are entitled to nothing. The reason why we should say thank you is because nothing that we have today is our entitlement. You know, recently I was somewhere with a group of us and uh, we were doing a Thanksgiving. And I said this. It's so unfortunate how we Pentecostals at times behave in the presence of God. You know, we come to God as commanders. I decree and declare. We even command, I command, may the spirit of God move and you are static. Move across Eldoret and save and you don't go to preach. But anyway, what I wanted to say is this. <laughs> We come to God as if God does not have a will. You know? We behave like spoiled children. We are entitled. We come to God and say we are entitled to good life. You know? Let's not behave like spoiled children. Psalms 136 verses 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Can we say amen to that? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. When you read the entire of this chapter from verses 1 downwards, David puts 
These things and says, for his mercy endures forever. You see that? People responded by saying his mercy endures forever. He says that the Lord gave them victory while they came out of Egypt. And the people said, for his mercy, you know, the Lord healed you. Why did God heal you? You are healthy today. Why are you healthy? Brethren, we are not entitled to anything from God. God does everything to us because of his mercy. And Paul puts it rightly. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. That is Paul speaking. He says, by his grace, I am what I am. All of us are products of the grace of God. All of us are products of the grace of God. And Paul understood this very well and quite well. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And he says, the grace of God in my life was not without effect. We are all products of the grace of God. We are whatsoever thing we are today because God's grace has been sufficient. It's because of the mercy of God. It is because of the mercy of God and because of the goodness of the Lord that we can stand here today and say the Lord is good for his mercy endures forevermore. It's because of the mercy of God that your business is doing well. It's because of the mercy of God that your children are blessed. It's because of the mercy of God that you even have a child. Praise the Lord. And so David comes to the Lord and says, I am not entitled to anything, but the mercy of God and the goodness of the Lord has done this to me. Can somebody say a big hallelujah? For his mercy endures forevermore. When we come to God, brethren, let us not bully God. Let's come with respect. And say, please, Father, it pleases you. If it pleases you, kindly do this. You know, we know how to tell our bosses, excuse me. But when we come to God, that word is not there. We are entitled and we behave like spoiled children. And that is why whatsoever thing we even have, we are not thankful. We think it's they are our rights. They are not our rights. They are all the gifts of grace which God has given to us. Why should we be thankful? The second and the last thing on that is that because it is good etiquette. Because it is good etiquette. It's good mannerism. It's good to say thank you when people do things to you. Hmm? Let's not behave like spoiled children, friends. It's good manners to say thank you. Don't say it's just a half empty. Let's be thankful. It's good mannerism when people do things to us. When the Lord blesses us, it's good mannerism to say thank you. I trust the Lord that after we get out of this place, you go and say thank you to your wife. You go and say thank you to your husband. You go and say thank you to your parents. You know, I should even ask and thank my wife in the presence of you. Thank you for marrying me, my dear. Entitled. How? <laughs> because you feel entitled, that is why you 
Don't care. You are not thankful. In a job employment, write to them and say thank you. You know, we always write them an application uh, letter. But we don't write to them a thank you letter. Who ever has written a thank you letter to your employer? I said, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you employed me. See, that's the time you, the address on Santa you address how you happy. It is good mannerism. It's good etiquette to be thankful people. Okay, I want to bring this to a close. And how should we give thanks? One, we should give thanks by deed and by word. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. In my former book, Theophilus, Theophilus was someone whom Luke wrote the book of Acts. And he says, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. I like the sequence there. He does not say, I write to you about the things which Jesus began to teach and to do. Jesus began to do and to teach. Jesus was a man of action. It said that action speaks louder than words. And so in our thanksgiving, we've got to be people who don't only say, but we do. You know, it's so strange how we tell one another we love each other. But at the same time, we hate one another with passion. So our thanksgiving should both be in word and in. We should not be thankful, but we should be thankful and also seem to be thankful. The, blessed, the blessings of thankfulness. One, the first blessing of thankfulness is that it enhances and solidifies good relationships. You know, when we are thankful, thankfulness will always grow our relationships. If you are thankful to the people around you, that relationship will grow. Whatever relationship you appreciate, then it means you value it. Whatsoever thing that you value, then you appreciate. And whatever thing we value, we put effort, time, and any other resource to it. We don't put value, we don't put resources on things we do not value. And the things we value are the very things we appreciate. Remember that. People would want to be in a relationship where they are and they feel valued. That is where people want to be. The second thing about the blessing of thankfulness is that it is a gateway to greater and more blessings as well as opportunities. You know, when we are thankful, thankfulness will open doors, other greater doors and opportunities for us. And I want to read this as I even come to the close. Psalms 50 verse 23, the Bible says, he who sacrifices thank offering honors me. That's God saying. Anybody who brings a thanksgiving offering to me, God says, that person honors me. If you honor God, then you have to bring a thanksgiving offering. And he, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. Look at this. God says, if you honor me, you will bring a thanksgiving sacrifice. And when you sacrifice to me a thanksgiving, you prepare a way. You prepare another opportunity. And this greater opportunity is the Lord is going to show you his salvation. Thankfulness will open greater doors. Thankfulness will open greater opportunities. Conclusion. Thankfulness is an heart issue. That's what we've said. And who can handle or tame the heart except the Lord? The Bible says that the heart is very cunning. And who can tame our hearts? It's only the Lord. 
You know, we see unthankfulness. We, we, we see people when they do not say thank you to us. But we do not see ourselves when we do not say thank you. We point fingers, but we don't point fingers at ourselves. But we point fingers at other people. David said, create in me a pure heart and renew a right, a steadfast, a right or a steadfast spirit within me. Thankfulness is a state of the heart. And we need God to create in us a clean and a right spirit. The Lord bless you. Welcome, Rev. <laughs>